make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. Real quick shout out to all the members that are there on the screen. Go check them out. Go give them a like, subscribe, you know, show them some love and support. Also, if this video gets over 250 likes, I shall continue the series. Thank you all for the support. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers and I will talk to you all later. What if Goku had Frieza's potential? On September 1st, 2022, over a year ago, I made a what if called What If Goku Had Frieza's Potential and I never did another part. I'm sorry. But that what if did really well, and over a year I have seen people commenting and begging me to do another part of it or to revamp it. So we did a vote, and it was really close, so I decided to do an extra vote on top of that, and it won. So we're going blast to the past. We are now going to do what if Goku had Frieza's potential in my remastered version. So I'm going to do the first part, and then I'm going to continue and do this series. Now, if you guys want to see the series all the way to the end, make sure to like this video, and let's get to 250 likes. If we reach this like goal, then I will continue on to the next part, and you guys don't want to miss the next part. Also, because of this, a quick little update. I posted on my community page about memberships and everything else. Now, if you guys remember, I did a Orange Piccolo video discussing on how powerful he was. I love doing it, but... YouTube did not like it that much, so it did not get as much views as my what if, which I understand since that's not my normal content, so you guys were not used to that. So I still love doing it, so what I'm doing is I'm putting all those discussions, power scaling, and more for memberships only. So if you want to see that kind of content, come join the Major Dragon Force and you will see a whole bunch of new videos releasing for memberships only. So come support the channel, I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Kakarot was floating in the chambers as the Saiyans scanned his power level. Though his power level was higher than the original, they wouldn't think much of it. Now, in this what if, Bardock still would give his son away and send him off to planet Earth. And he would give his life to fight Frieza. Goku would still land and meet Grandpa Gohan, where he would still hit his head and basically calming down his Saiyan behavior. Now, sadly, he would still kill Grandpa Gohan and he would still meet Bulma years later. Now this version of Goku had a power level of 200, over 20 times stronger than his original self with basic survival and training. Now let's pause for a sec. In the official Dragon Ball Soul case, it took Frieza only a few short months to go from being weaker than Namek self to fighting Super Saiyan Blue level beings, which is truly incredible. I will be controlling his potential by saying that first, he is a child, and for most of Dragon Ball and early Dragon Ball Z, he isn't in his prime age yet, hence his potential is not at his max. So it's busted, it isn't at its peak. And he's not training for a threat or some of its story just to clear it up. Now let's get back into it. They would still search the Dragon Balls. Now this time around, Goku being much stronger, they would meet Master Roshi. After meeting Master Roshi, he would teach Goku and was amazed by his power and growth. Goku would easily defeat and kill the Red Ribbon Army. This means that Dr. Jiro would also be killed in the attacks as well. This would change the Android Saga years later. His story would, during this Goku would win the tournament and would be fighting Demon King Piccolo. During the Demon King Piccolo arc, he would have easily defeated him as there has no chance against his version of Goku with, especially with the power and potential unlock with the Ultra Divine Water has no chance. So because of this, he would then go train with Kami. Now, by the way, Demon King Piccolo would still birth Piccolo Jr. So that would happen the exact same. And he would go train with Kami for a few years and he would then begin his fight with Piccolo Jr. arc. And this time around, Goku would easily defeat Tien, not much different to how he originally did it, but this time, he would easily defeat Piccolo Jr. Because of this, he would still get with Chi-Chi the same way, and he would spare Piccolo Jr. so Kami doesn't die, and he doesn't want to lose to Dragon Balls either. So him and Chi-Chi would still get married, and their life would finally be at peace. They would have a son and name him Gohan, his potential would be around the same as the original. As there was peace for about five years, until one day, Raditz would appear. 
and he meets Goku at the Kami house and he tells him of his species and that he will join or he will die. He taps the scouter, seeing that Goku's power level was 800. That's actually quite impressive for being on this low level planet, but it was far weaker than him. Raditz and Goku would then fight as Goku would easily handle Raditz and he would give him one chance to leave the planet. But Raditz, he wouldn't do that. Raditz would continue to fight Goku as the Saiyan pride would not let him lose his fight. Raditz even thinks about maybe he can transform to a grade 8, but there's no moon out. So what is he going to do? So Raditz would then use a double Sunday, which Goku would easily deflect the attack. If there's not much else that Raditz can do. Goku would then prove to him as he would power up. His scouter would rise past 30,000 and then it would blow up. Raditz couldn't believe it. As he has one last ditch effort, he would try and fire an attack towards the Kami house to kill his friends. But then Goku would easily block the attack and he would fly in and kill Raditz. Now off in space, Vegeta and Nappa hear of this power level reading and they think it's a fluke but Vegeta does seem pretty interested to go check it out at least and that Raditz was actually defeated so they want to go see. They would head to Earth as they're interested, a year would pass. Now during this year, would they know about it? Now you could argue that when Goku defeated Raditz, he would tell them that two Saiyans will be on their way, more powerful than him. So because of this, Goku and his Z fighters would begin their training. Now during this what if, Piccolo would not take Gohan and let him go out on his own, but you could argue that Goku would allow Gohan to live on his own, but Goku would be watching him every now and again from afar alongside Piccolo as they would begin their training, as this was best for Gohan to survive on his own and learn how to control his power. Now, over training, they know that Gohan has intense potential within him, so when he's angered, he can power up even more. With this, Gohan has now two teachers, and he's even stronger than ever. Piccolo is also stronger as well because he has Goku to fight, and he's not babysitting Gohan the entire time, so he has more time to train on his own. So, a year would pass. Now, Vegeta and Nappa would arrive. Now, the Z Fighters are waiting for them. Now, during this year of training, Goku would train with his son and Gohan and Piccolo. He would also train with the other Z Fighters as well, just to point that out, but they would probably be around the same strength. Piccolo and Gohan, after the one year, they would be a little stronger than the original. Once when they meet the Saiyans, Goku would give them a warning to leave and to never return. As of course, this makes Vegeta laugh as the fight would begin. Nappa would charge in and easily try and punch Goku with all that he had. Goku would easily deflect the attacks with not that much of a threat as he thinks that, wow, this guy is definitely stronger than Raditz, but not as hyped up as Raditz thought he was making him. And Goku was not really that interested. But now who was actually interested to fight was Piccolo. Piccolo would then remove his weighted clothing and he would fight Nappa, as Goku doesn't want to get in his way. Now because of this, would they still spawn the little, you know, small little Cybermen? I don't think so, as they're not really trying to waste time. So this is when Goku would then fly off and go deal with Vegeta. Piccolo would actually be a little stronger than Nappa by a little bit and overpowering him during their fight. And Piccolo would charge up a special beam cannon and he would hit Nappa full force and completely blast through his stomach, knocking him to the ground as Nappa was defeated. But Piccolo was exhausted from the battle. Now cutting to Goku and Vegeta, they would have flown off a little bit and Vegeta was surprised that this Saiyan is so calm yet he's in front of a super elite. But now of course they would fly to a more deserted area and as the fight would go on, Vegeta notices that he doesn't really seem to be trying as Vegeta would punch him with a lot of power, Goku would easily block the attacks. The tables have turned. And it was Vegeta that actually powered up to his max power of 18,000. He would still continue to fight him, but he sees that this Saiyan's not even breaking a sweat. What's going on here? It must be a trick. There's no way that this low class is beating him. It's impossible. Goku will show him that he's wrong, that with the right training, even a low class can beat an a super elite. As he would then power up, Vegeta's scouter would then beep, and it rises. His power level would skyrocket past 40,000, and it would blow up. As Vegeta screamed, there is no way that this is not his true power. There's no way. He would then fire attacks at Goku, which would easily dodge the attacks. He had an idea. If his power level was 40,000, his grade 8 can easily crush that power. So he would summon a fake moon and throw it into the air, and he would transform. Now, Goku was surprised to see the grade 8 and to see a big power jump, but... Goku was not worried about it. As Goku would then charge up more of his power, he would fly in and deliver powerful blows to Vegeta, knocking him down. 
As he fired a full power Kamehameha wave, it would hit Vegeta, blasting the ape through rock mountains, as Vegeta would then crash and fall to the ground. With the help of Krillin, they would remove his tail, as Krillin would use his Kanzan and would cut his tail off, and Vegeta would revert to normal. But he was completely exhausted and defeated. He was ready for Goku to kill him, but Goku would offer his hand and help him up. As Goku would actually send him over to Bulma's for him to heal up, Vegeta's ship was destroyed and he was stuck on Earth, but Goku would spare his life. But now, Vegeta knows that Frieza is going to head to Earth to find the Dragon Balls and this high power, power level that they saw. Now, most likely Frieza would send the Ginyu Force first, and over time, he would then heal up and stay with Bulma, and they would start to fall in love earlier on, and Vegeta would actually train with Goku to prepare for the arrival. As Goku would ask about the Ginyu Force and Frieza, Vegeta would talk about it, saying that Frieza's most powerful being in the universe, possibly stronger than you, Kakarot. But Goku was actually excited. For the first time in his life, there might be somebody to actually give him the taste of defeat, or maybe a true fight. He's definitely excited for Frieza to show up. So because of this, him and Vegeta would begin to train harder than ever to prepare for the fight. As they would come to start respecting each other, as Goku had an idea for Vegeta. As they could grow stronger using the Zenkai ability, they would use the Hyperbolic Time Chamber and bring Sensu Beans. As him and Vegeta for a whole year, Goku and Vegeta would begin sparring near to the death, beating down Vegeta near death, and Vegeta would use the Sensu Beans and grow stronger as Goku would actually teach Vegeta martial arts and more about the Earth and everything else and more techniques, and Vegeta would teach Goku about what it means to be a Saiyan and their history. They would finally step out. Vegeta has gotten much stronger. Given the Zenkai's plot-induced ability, even being beat up one time, Goku got 33 times stronger because of it. It's pretty busted. So I'm going to not give him an insane power level, but Vegeta would go from the 18,000 and his power level was at least 1 to 2 million. Now this is not too far fetched as for a whole year, they would beat Vegeta near death and then give him an instant Sensu Bean abusing the Zenkai ability and his, and his adaptability. And Vegeta is a prodigy when he's training smart. You guys should understand that Goku is very intelligent when it comes to learning how to train. And Vegeta would want to learn from Goku, which did does damage his pride, but if Vegeta trains smart, he is even shown to beat Kakarot and catch up to him easily because he is a natural prodigy being of royal blood. Now he is not stronger than Goku here, Goku is still far stronger, but Vegeta was able to catch up a lot. Now because of this, the Ginyu Force would arrive. Now Vegeta would tell Kakarot to stand back and don't interfere. He would smirk and power up. He would easily defeat all the Ginyu Force, defeating Raccoon, Jason, Burger, and of course, Guldo. Captain Ginyu was the last one remaining, and he was battle damaged, but he was shocked to see Vegeta. But now he has a, he has a smirk as he would use Change Now, and he would hit Vegeta and take his body. Now you think that he won, as he would actually turn to fight his comrade Goku, but Goku would actually easily defeat Captain Ginyu as he's not used to the body and Goku's far stronger than Vegeta anyway. And Captain Ginyu would try to change bodies to Goku. Goku was surprised, but Vegeta would then jump in time to get his original body back. Vegeta would then scream in anger and fire a full power Gallic gun at Captain Ginyu, killing him, obliterating him completely. As Vegeta was healed, Frieza would be on his way soon. So, they would rest and continue training to prepare for his arrival. Goku and Vegeta has trained in the hyperbolic time chamber for over a year. Now this is recapping the last what if, as Vegeta was pushed to his mental and physical limit, pushing the Zenkai ability that the Saiyans can use to his max. After this, the two Saiyans would go fight the Ginyu Force, as Vegeta would easily handle them, and he would also handle Captain Ginyu pretty easy. Only hiccup was that he had the change now technique, but Vegeta was able to get his body back. Now Frieza was on his way, following the Ginyu Force as well. Now once when Frieza would arrive, of course Vegeta and them had time to rest up and be prepared, as once when Frieza arrived, Vegeta was now ready to face Frieza. Vegeta was pretty confident though. He knew that he could probably take down Frieza, considering how powerful he's gotten. But now because of the Z fighters who have been training as well, they would easily handle Frieza's men, and Vegeta would easily be able to handle Zarbon and Dodoria. Now because of this, Frieza would then reveal himself finally, and he would step out of his little pod and he'd be ready to fight Vegeta himself. As Frieza would try to scan his power level, 
It reads as power levels around 40 to 50,000, which Frieza says, oh, you got in pretty strong, but that's nothing compared to me. Frieza would then begin his fight with Vegeta, but he doesn't know that Vegeta learned to suppress his power level. As Vegeta would easily handle first form Frieza, they would begin trading blows back and forth as Vegeta would overpower him easily, giving the beat down to Frieza. Frieza was shocked as he said, this doesn't make sense. Your power level was you know, only 50,000. How is this possible? How can a Saiyan have, be able to, then he thinks, wait a minute, this is because he can hide his power level. It makes sense. He's one of the beings who's able to sense his power level and hide it. As Frieza would then remove the scouter off his face as it's useless now, he would then smirk to Vegeta and Vegeta tells Frieza, I want you to go to your full power. I know you have a transformation there somewhere. As then that is exactly what Frieza would do. Frieza would then go into his second form. Bulking up in size and only growing bigger, his power level was roughly stated to be around 1.2 to 1.5 million, which is getting closer to Vegeta. Vegeta would then smirk and say this might actually be a challenge, as Vegeta's power level is around 2 million, 2.1 million. As they would begin their fight, Vegeta would still have the upper hand, but Frieza was able to hold his own a little bit in their fight. But with Vegeta's new techniques that he also learned from Goku, even using Solar Flare and more, he would give the beat down on Frieza. Overpowering him, trading blows with Frieza, Frieza was shocked about how powerful the Saiyan has become in such a short time, it doesn't make any sense. But now this time around, Frieza would then jump to his third form. As this actually surprised Vegeta, he didn't expect him to actually be able to do this, Frieza would then power up again. But now this is when they're pretty much seemingly equal in their fight. You could argue that Frieza has a little bit of the upper hand. Vegeta would then showcase a move that he practiced in that one year of training. He would then charge up a final flash. And this would hit Frieza full force, sending Frieza into the earth, making a massive crater as Frieza was actually very injured. As you know, the final flash increases the user's strength much higher. But then, Frieza states, I have no choice then, you will be the first to see my true form. As then, Frieza would go into his final form, the fourth form, his true state. Now this would shock Vegeta, who was already exhausted from fighting Frieza. But then now, Frieza would begin to overpower Vegeta, almost torturing him. As Vegeta has little to no chance against this version of Frieza, Goku was going to step in, but he stopped. Because he knows that Vegeta's going to, something's going to happen. He can sense Vegeta's power and his anger is rising. As Frieza would then launch Vegeta to the floor, he's getting ready to kill him as Vegeta would be punching the ground, stating that even after all of this near-death training, even after pushing his body and mental to the limit, he still cannot beat Frieza. Is he is is this true? Is he actually Royal Saiyan blood? Is, is he this much of a failure? This infuriates Vegeta more than anything. As he gives up, he doesn't care anymore. As because of this, Vegeta would then scream, and his hair will start to turn yellow and golden. He has now transformed into the legendary Super Saiyan. Having the glowing golden hair and the blue eyes, he would then stare down Frieza. As Vegeta doesn't know what happened, as he thinks, did he do it? Did he, tra did he actually transform? Now Goku never seen this form before, and he was actually surprised by how strong it made Vegeta. Goku might want to learn it himself. But then Vegeta would then smirk and say, this is your death, Frieza. And Vegeta would then fly in and begin overpowering Frieza very quickly. Now, because the fact that Vegeta does have a power level of around 2 million. Now, if you do times that by 50, you would have a power level of around 100 million plus. So he's around, he's near full power Frieza's power. Now, Frieza was shocked with how Vegeta was able to transform into a Super Saiyan. So Frieza would use up to 80% of his power. And he would still be able to hold his own against Vegeta, as his power level is around 88 million or so at the state. So he is able to hold his own a little bit against the Super Saiyan Vegeta. But Vegeta had the upper hand the entire time, and his and he was only growing stronger, and he was only beating out Frieza even worse. But now Frieza can offer Vegeta that, hey, if, if you're unbeatable, let me go into my full power then. And then you can really have your true fight. Now, Vegeta, I feel like he wouldn't accept this because he doesn't want to waste his time with Frieza. As he feels like you'll just be wasting my time. So he would still fly in and continue attacking Frieza until Vegeta would then have Frieza on his hands and knees defeated. 
As Vegeta would then smirk, he would actually turn to Kakarot and tell him that the fight's done and it's over with. As then Frieza watched Vegeta drop his guard again, which is a grave mistake. As Frieza would then fire a death beam that would actually hit Vegeta through the shoulder, and it would gravely injure him. Now at this point in time Vegeta was injured, Frieza would take this opportunity to fire every blast that he had hitting Vegeta, making a large traitor. As, Fre as while Vegeta recovered, he got up as he had as he had battle damage and his, most of his armor was destroyed, and he was holding his shoulder. Frieza was above, getting bigger. As he was bulking up, Frieza was going to his full power. And then Vegeta was irritated, but he knows that he can still beat Frieza. Now, once that Frieza reached his full power, the true fight begins, as he would fly down and overpower Vegeta very quickly as Vegeta only had one arm. Vegeta would use his maximum power to even survive the onslaught that Frieza was doing, as Goku was actually getting ready to step in, but he wants to see what happens first. But now because of this, the fight would continue, as Frieza would enjoy almost torturing Vegeta, claiming that, oh, this is the legendary Super Saiyan, oh, you, you know, you thought you were true and all-powerful, but I am the Supreme Being, you're just a monkey. This infuriated Vegeta more than anything, as he wants to try out the final flash one last time, but... As he's begins charging it, Frieza stops him as he knows this attack, he's seen it before, he's not going to let him channel that much energy. Not again. Vegeta was infuriated. As then, Vegeta would then fall to his knees as he ran out of energy, returning to base form. Frieza would then hover over Vegeta, charging up a death ball as he was going to end the Saiyan race. As Frieza, right before Frieza would throw it, a hand would grab his forearm and it was Goku, telling him that the fight is over and he gives Frieza one chance to go home. Frieza would then state, who are you, yank his hand away, and he would throw a full power beam attack right at Goku, and Goku would actually tank the attack, and he's relatively fine. Goku would then fly in and gut punch Frieza, similar to how he did in the original Super Saiyan, making him spit blood and fall over. Goku would then pick Vegeta up, and he would hand it over to Krone and the rest, telling him to give him a sensu bean and try and get him healed up, as Vegeta was knocked out cold. But now Frieza was infuriated. Who who was he? Why is he here? But he's different than them. I say, is he a Super Saiyan too? Is he hope not? As Goku would only charge up to about 40% of his power to handle final form Frieza at his full strength. Not much of an issue. If you guys want to gauge how powerful Goku is, you can do that in the comments down below. Goku's only using 40 to 50% of his power to fight full power Frieza, and he can kind of handle Frieza without much of an issue. So let you guys break that down below. The fight would continue. As Frieza would then charge at Goku, they would begin trading blows. As Goku doesn't want to kill Frieza instantly, as he just wants to see what Frieza can do, but he's also noticing that Frieza's getting more and more tired. His power level is dropping slowly. Drop, drop, drop. It's getting weaker and weaker. Goku gets it now. It is because Frieza cannot hold this power as he's not used to it. He can't, he was never been to his full strength before. It makes sense. He gets it now. But now Goku would then begin giving the beat down on Frieza, kind of to teach him a lesson, as he would beat Frieza nearly to death. Now Frieza was running out of options, he prepares to charge up an attack to destroy Earth, Goku would not have it, as he would charge up a Kamehameha, and he would appear right in front of Frieza, and blast him full force, and completely annihilate Frieza. Lord Frieza was now killed. But now Vegeta would then wake up in the hospital as he was in Bulma's laboratory where she was healing him and recovering him. Vegeta was infuriated that he lost. But Goku was there with him. He said, yes, true, you might have not been able to beat Vegeta. But because of this Vegeta, think about it. You now have a new power that you can strive for and only grow stronger because of it. And this would actually make Vegeta smirk as he's like, yeah, you're right. I am a Super Saiyan. You know, Lord Frieza, I, then Vegeta proves himself that I dropped my guard. That was my issue. I, I got too confident. And that's how Frieza defeated me. And so Vegeta would actually thank Kakarot for training him, but he'll start training on his own now, as he has a power to strive for. And Goku understands this. But now because of this, this greatly changes the story of Dragon Ball. Goku never go visits the, the Yard Rats. He never learns this in transmission. And because of this, future Trunks would never actually appear because the androids never were made so there is no destruction in the future saga nothing like that so there will actually be peace 
for well over seven years. Technically almost 10 if you had the three years the Andrews never showed up. Now, would Goku get the heart fires? I don't think so because he never even left Earth and we don't know where the heart fires originated from. You could argue that it happened, AKA from outer space or maybe even the likes of Dr. Jiro gave him the heart virus. We don't know, but I'm just gonna say that since he really never left Earth and he kind of stayed there, I'm just gonna say he never got the heart fires to begin with. But now because of this, 10 years of peace. Goku would then have another son named Goten, Vegeta would have a child of his own named Trunks, and life was actually very, very peaceful. Until one day, a Supreme Kai would appear as he is looking for someone to help take down this massive threat. With over 10 years of peace, the Android Saga never happens and the Cell Saga never happens. Before this video starts though, I want you guys to get this video to 250 likes. If you guys can get it there, the next part will be coming out and you guys don't want to miss the next one when he will be facing off against the gods. You will definitely see how broken Goku especially will be getting very shortly. Anyway, 250 likes to get this video to the next series. I really appreciate all the support. Let's get into it. Since it has been 10 years of peace and prosperity, a lot of things have been different. Because of this, the androids never appeared. That means Cell never appeared. Trunks never went back to the past and never had to handle that situation. Goku, in my opinion, also never got the heart virus. So because of this, since Goku never got the heart virus as well, Goku's not dead, which means he would never know about Super Saiyan 3 to begin with, nor would he also know about Super Saiyan 2. Also, he would never learn the fusion dance on top of that. And so you could argue that, okay, that's not a big deal, as I feel like Vegeta would actually be the one to push his limits the most. Now, let me explain. As it's been 10 years, Goten has still been born, and all the events happen the exact same with all of them meeting up at the tournament. Everything seems pretty peaceful, as Goku has kept up his training. For the past 10 years, he has gotten immensely stronger, even with the training that he has, as a lot of people have been asking, what, why is Goku not as strong as Whis at this point? Because of, you know, Frieza trained for three months and he was able to fight gods. Well, because Goku has the same problem that Frieza has. No motivation. Think about it. Goku is constantly pushing his limits because the odds are always against him. But this Goku has kind of had a laid back life. He's never had a being push him to his past potential he's never had a being push him past his limits before to where he never had that fire swell up within him to try and become the strongest that he can now this does not mean that goku does not train he is a saiyan and he will continue to train of course he will and he will continue to strive to get stronger but not as that burning motivation as he used to in the original especially not even the likes of vegeta who has more motivation and more burning desire than the original what if so because of this, Goku is not using his full potential. Look at Frieza. Frieza never had to train before a day in his life. And because of this, once when he figured out how strong Goku and them had become, he took three months and trained one of the hardest training he's ever done to even catch up to them. And then he had to train for 10 plus years to get the new Black Frieza form. And he said this was the most grueling training in his entire life that he's ever done before. But he's happy that he did because now he's stronger than ever. See, that Goku is similar to Frieza's mindset to where he's only going to get strong unless a new threat appears and Goku has to push his limit to go against something. Because ever since Goku was a child, all he has to do is train a little bit and he can defeat every being pretty easily. It's a boring life for him. But now, they would all meet up for the tournament. Now, of course, Gohan here would still be pretty powerful as well. We're not going to diss on Gohan as well. And you also got to look at Goten as well. Goten would actually be more stronger than the original. Same with Gohan because they have Goku around to train them here and there. So Gohan never slacked off his training to be scholar full time. So Gohan's not a weakling. Vegeta actually got a lot more stronger because for the past 10 years, he's been training harder than ever, but he's actually been training smart. Now, let me explain the reason why is because Vegeta never trained smart like Goku. And there's actually a video that I did on it for the membership page if you guys want to check it out that I go into detail on why Vegeta could never truly surpass Goku only in some moments when he changed and he trains and smart. So if you guys want to check that out, go join the Major Dragon Force if you want to check that out. But now, Vegeta here, because he trained with Goku and learned a lot from, from over the year, he's learned how to train smart. 
not kill himself over training. He learns to rest. He learns to eat well. He learns to train well. He learns to better himself. Look outside the box in terms of power. The Supreme Kai would still reveal himself, and Gohan would still get his energy taken after Videl was beaten by Spopovich. As Gohan would still meet the Vito Kai and more, he would still power up, and I feel like Gohan at this point would go Super Saiyan. Now because of this, why would Gohan go Super Saiyan? Well, because Gohan here is a little bit more stronger than we take granted for. He does have the same potential as before, but Goten was able to turn Super Saiyan instantly. So I feel like Gohan, if he kept his training up, he would be able to do the same thing. And we'll get into Goku in a minute. But either way, if Gohan was base form or he wasn't Super Saiyan, he would have still had his energy taken, the same as before. But now because of this, they would still run off and chase after Bobbity. But now right before all that happens, Vegeta still wanted his rematch against Goku, as they haven't fought in years and Vegeta was really wanting to fight him. And he would still be matched up against Kakarot to face him. Now once when they arrive on Bobby's ship, Vegeta would still be taken over after they defeated Pui Pui and Yakon. Vegeta would still be taken over by Bobby's magical control, and he'd become Majin Vegeta. As Vegeta did this to even get even stronger to go fight Goku. Goku's not going to turn down this fight, as he sees how strong Vegeta's actually gotten and actually surprised him, as the two would begin their true battle. But now because of this, Goku and Vegeta would then fly off the same rocky wasteland where it all started, and the two would begin the legendary battle. Both of them would be in Super Saiyan. Yes, Goku does have Super Saiyan. But it's a little bit different looking, as you guys can see in the thumbnail, as I wanted the Super Saiyan to look unique to Goku. Now, Vegeta didn't really care about it. As the two began their fight, Vegeta was furious that Goku was not even trying. Goku would even revert back to base form and fight Vegeta. This only fuels his rage more, as Vegeta would then transform into a Super Saiyan 2. Which this would actually surprise Goku, he didn't know there was a power past that before. As Vegeta would continue, he was twice as strong as before, but Goku was still able to relatively hold his own. Until Vegeta was now defeated on the floor because Goku launched a fury of attacks to end this fight quickly, as he doesn't have time for this, he really needed to go handle Majin Buu. But Vegeta would not allow it, as his rage fueled him even more than ever, and the body magic was only fueling it more. Vegeta would then scream as he would shatter his limit. He's been trying to reach something, a form, a form that he's never felt before, but he knows it was there, something past Super Saiyan 2, ascended, a new level. Vegeta would then transform into a Super Saiyan 3. His power was enormous, and Goku was utterly shocked that he was able to push his power yet again. This got Goku excited. As this version of Vegeta is vastly and vastly much more powerful than his original self, this version of Vegeta trained for 10 years straight without much of a hiccup bothering him, and he trained smart as well. So this version of Vegeta is far stronger than the likes of Super Buu, and he is near the levels of Buhan, and in the realm of Vegeta, but Vegeta is far superior than that, but he's definitely in the realms of Buhan, which goes to show that if Vegeta trains smart, it is terrifying how powerful he can actually become. Now Goku was starting to get overwhelmed a little bit in his base form, as Goku knows that if he fights in his base form, it's going to take too long. So Goku would then power up into Super Saiyan, and he would defeat Vegeta. As Vegeta would then have ran out of energy, Goku would have still grabbed the Sensu Beans, but this is where Vegeta would still knock him out. As we know, Goku still drops his guard, he's the same old Goku. Vegeta would then need to Sensu Bean and fully recover, as he would go fight Majin Buu. But now once when Vegeta goes to fight Fat Buu, he would be in a Super Saiyan form, and as we know, Super Saiyan Vegeta, especially the Majin version here, can easily handle Fat Buu tossing him around. But every time that he does, Majin Buu he just keeps on healing and just recovering. So Vegeta thinks, oh, well, I need to end it now then. So Vegeta himself would then power up to Super Saiyan 3 one last time, and he was going to completely obliterate Buu. As every attack that he did kept on not working, Buu kept on healing, even from a few microbes and bits and pieces, he kept on getting back together. Vegeta makes a fatal mistake here. 
Vegeta's a bit cocky with his power and he's overconfident. And on top of this, he forgets to realize how taxing Super Saiyan 3 is when he just got the form, as he exhausts himself very quickly. Now this is when Majin Buu actually gets the upper hand on Vegeta, overpowering him as Vegeta was back in Super Saiyan, but he was exhausted. But Vegeta here would not back down, as he would then sacrifice himself, so blowing himself up the same as before. But in this what if, it would actually kill Majin Buu as the blast was far powerful enough to kill him. This also means that there is no Oob, no Kid Buu, and no Super Buu and no Buu Han. That also means that Gohan never went to the other world to train with Elder Kai. That means that Elder Kai was never born. Or is he? Cutting to Gohan, Gohan would have still fought Deborah. And while it is true that Gohan never lost his edge, Gohan, I feel, would have still had some trouble. Even though he didn't lose his edge, he's still a little bit rusty because he's more focused learning. He does some workouts here and there. I feel like Deborah could still get the upper hand on him and outlast Gohan in their fight almost killing him, maybe not as severe, but you can argue that when Majin Buu especially comes out, he can definitely take down Gohan pretty quickly, but Gohan can hold his own much better. So, Kabuto Kai and Supreme Kai would then save Gohan, and he would begin their training. Now, Goku afterwards would go to go find Vegeta, as they're going to go search for the Dragon Balls to wish Vegeta back. Now, because of this too, Goku would then go meet Gohan as Gohan was practicing with the Z-Sword, and they would large up Ketchin and throw it, and it would break the sword, thus releasing Elder Kai. Elder Kai would then explain about himself, and they would get to know him, as he would agree to unlock Gohan's potential to make him stronger. Now, he does offer to Goku that his potential is beyond anything he's ever seen before. If he unlocks his potential, he might, and Elder Kai thinks this in his head, he might be able to surpass a certain god of destruction. But Goku doesn't want it. This is not the Goku that we know. Goku would never accept power from somebody. He despises it, unless he has no other choice. And in his case, the Earth's fine. So he doesn't really need it. So because of this, Elder Kai would just do a Gohan. That's fine with him. It's less, well, it's actually less time for him dancing around him anyway. So Goku would then get the Dragon Balls and wish Vegeta back, and they would just make it up as they would have respect for each other. Vegeta understands that he is the best. He understands and respects that, as no matter how much he can train, he can never catch up, and he understands that, and he understands where, where he belongs. Vegeta finally comes to terms that he's second, and that Kakarot is the best, with how he trains and how he fights to prove himself. Gohan at this point would unlock Ultimate Gohan, and we would see a really cool fight between father and son, instead of him fighting Tanks and Super Buu. Now, in this version, I believe that Goku would definitely win against Ultimate Gohan here. Even though Ultimate Gohan is a little bit stronger than the original, Goku is still far superior to that. But Goku was beyond impressed that his son got this much more powerful and explains to him that training and getting stronger means everything. Because one day he might not be here. And then what else? What's going to happen after that? Once when he's gone, Gohan needs to be ready to protect the Earth in case anything happens. Which Gohan understands completely. But now, far off, in another planet, there was a certain purple cat sleeping. His name was Lord Beerus, as he was having a dream about the perfect fighter, his true rival, a god, a Super Saiyan god, somebody that can challenge him to a real fight. Our story begins with Lord Beerus awakening on his planet, as Lord Beerus has had odd visions of a being, a rival, that could truly give him the fight that he's been looking for for millions of years. He would speak to Whis about the Saiyans and asking if Frieza had finally did what he was told to do, as, well, Whis would state that while it is true, but there was a few Saiyans that actually survived. Now these few Saiyans, one of them defeated Frieza very easily. Now of course, Whis would then showcase on the hologram of his staff, very similar to what he showed Beers before, but with just some different changes. Whis would state that this Saiyan, though he's immortal, he has incredible potential, and they have a being as well called Vegeta. That rings a bell in Beerus' head. He remembers Vegeta, that's King Vegeta's son, the little prince. He's alive too? And he says yes, it appears that they were able to push the Super Saiyan power even further than that, as it is a rare ability. This does pique Beerus' interest. As he asks, well, where is this Goku and Vegeta? He wants to go meet them. 
Now, Goku during this time never truly met King Kai, so he would not be training there. He would actually be on Earth at Bulma's party with Vegeta and the others. So Beerus would then leave and he would arrive. This is where some changes are going to occur. Beerus, I believe, will still goof off and, you know, he'll kind of calm down a little bit and he won't be as irritated because he just wants to fight Goku. But first, that food does sound pretty delicious and he's kind of hungry. So first, before they do any real fighting, Goku was hungry too. They decided to eat and then Goku can fight him all he wants, no problem, which Beerus understands. Though only during this issue though, Beerus got pudding as he was really excited to try it, all up until Goten and Trunks hit his pudding out of his hand. This would make Beerus furious. As Vegeta tried to fly in to stop it, Beerus would easily dispatch Vegeta, and this is when Vegeta would then get back up and state, well, I guess we don't have a chance then now, don't we? As Beerus state, you know what? Just because you ruined my pudding, I'm gonna destroy this planet, which kind of sounds like Beerus, doesn't it? As Vegeta would then power up, he would then push past his limits and go into Super Saiyan 2. And Beerus does commend that the Saiyan is very powerful. He would treat Vegeta very similar to how he treated Super Saiyan 3 Goku, not really giving too much effort. As Goku would watch as he doesn't want to interrupt Vegeta's fight as Vegeta had first dibs. Vegeta would then scream and transform into a Super Saiyan 3. Pushing his power to his maximum, he would trade blows with Beerus as this version of Vegeta is around the same level as Vegito. Now this would actually give Beerus a little bit of a little, a little back and forth as he's far stronger than Goku was, but of course, not enough for Beerus, he wasn't all that true impressed, as Gohan would even jump in in his ultimate form, as this version of Gohan is a little bit stronger than the original, but he's far weaker than Vegeta was, so Beerus would dispatch up the other ones very quickly before Goku would stop him and say, it's just some pudding, but I'm not going to let you destroy my planet over some pudding, look, how about we fight? Now Beerus states that he's looking for a Super Saiyan God, and he demands that there has to be one, if there's not, he will destroy the entire planet. But Goku doesn't never heard of one, he doesn't know what he's talking about. The fight would then begin as Goku would fight Beerus in his base form. Now this version of Goku in his base form is far more powerful than we've ever seen. As since he did fight Vegeta, Goku has been training a bit more intensely than before, and because of the Majin Buu event and other, just so he's ready for things. Goku already at this point has far surpassed Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta in his base form, and he's giving Beerus a pretty interesting fight, but it's not too much to impress the God of Destruction. Now Goku would transform into a Super Saiyan, but he had red eyes, which was different to Beerus, but he would be a lot more stronger, but to Beerus this is not really impressing him that much. But Goku was able to hold his own, but the issue was is that he can't sense Beerus, as Beerus has God energy and Goku does not. Now this version of Goku, even in Super Saiyan, is around the same level near there of Super Saiyan God, which is incredible considering the fact that he hasn't truly trained super intensely with motivation. But you will see very shortly in this what if that once when Goku has that, you know, fire put in him, he will become very powerful. So because of this, Beerus would then defeat Son Goku and he states he's pretty powerful, but he's not a god. Goku states, wait, let's use the Dragon Balls and ask. So, after using the Dragon Balls, the same events would happen with Fidel coming out that she's pregnant, and they had enough Saiyans to be able to give Goku the God power. Once when Goku has become a Super Saiyan God, though, he is far, far more powerful than Beerus even anticipated. As we know, Super Saiyan God pushes your potential to the max, and it gives you power that has never been seen before. All of the beings, other than Fidel, are stronger than the original, especially Vegeta. Now remember, all the Saiyans went to their max power to give it to Goku. Goku here is far more powerful than the original. His fight with Beerus was very different. As the fight commenced, Goku was flying right towards Beerus in the crimson red aura, showing his unimaginable amount of power that Beerus was not expecting. Now Beerus, of course, was taken aback by the overwhelming strength out of nowhere displayed by Goku, as he was surprised that this god power really pumped him up. Now, of course, they would trade blows back and forth, at this would send shockwaves throughout space, and the planets in the vicinity trembled at the display of raw power. Now Goku would then fly forward with blinding speed, surprising Beerus. His movements were so fast that they appeared as just after images to everybody else, as they completely lost him, as they can't keep up with the speed. He would then deliver powerful punches and kicks at Beerus, and Beerus was actually starting to get overwhelmed, until Beerus would then skillfully pair the attacks, showing off his purple aura 
The flight would then take off into space, as Beerus was truly impressed by the Saiyan's power. This means that he can definitely showcase more of his power. Goku here was still using about 80% himself, as this would actually make Beerus angry that he's holding back. As Beerus would then power up his own strength, showing more power than he's ever shown before, he would then start to overpower Goku a little bit until Goku uses 100%. And then as the battle continued, Goku was actually damaging Beerus drawing blood as Beerus was doing the same thing to Goku. As this version of Goku is around the same strength as Beerus at his full strength, giving Beerus the fight that he's truly been looking for. But now Beerus has had enough, Beerus then shot a full Hakai attack right at Goku and Goku was able to destroy it. This would shock Beerus. As we know with the Hakai ability, if a user is strong enough, they are able to disperse the attack without dying. So, Beerus would then charge up a massive sphere of a Hakai and launch it right at Goku, as Goku would then charge up a full power Kamehameha wave and fire it right towards the attack, as it would end in a stalemate, blowing both the beings back as both of them were completely exhausted. But Goku was not willing to give up. Goku channeled all the power he had left to turn into a Super Saiyan, as he would then fly towards Beerus with all of his strength, and Beerus would do the same, and both of them would then clock each other in the face, similar to what they did against Frieza, and they would both knock each other out. Now, of course, Whis was there, as Whis would then take them back down to Earth and heal them. Goku, for the first time, can truly say that he didn't truly win a fight. For the first time, there was somebody to actually push Goku to use his true power. Goku now has a fire within him that he's never had before. Beerus would explain that while it is true he's a god of destruction, but there are many other beings mightier than he even he is. This puts a fire in Goku's belly, a fire that he's never really had before, a motivation, determination, as Goku now knows that there is somebody stronger than him, that he can become stronger. And he thanks Beerus truly. As Whis would be very interested in Goku, and even Vegeta too, and he would offer to train them. As most of the events would happen the same with Goku training with Vegeta, as remember two is that Goku already has the god energy, he has to learn how to channel it, same with Vegeta as well, so most of the training would pretty much happen the exact same. Now, as for Frieza. Now as for the Golden Frieza saga, most of the events would happen the same with Frieza being brought back, and Frieza would begin his training. Now, you could argue that Frieza would train for a little bit longer because of how powerful he knew that Goku was, but that's really up to debate, as it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Frieza thinks that if he trains for a few months, he'll become the strongest. He'll become far surpassed than what Goku even was. But just for fun, let's say instead of the three to four months he trained, he trained for twice that amount. So Frieza's twice as powerful, or probably even more. So because of this, Frieza would actually have mastery over his golden, his golden form, so he would not have an issue with the stamina. So because of this, once when he arrives on Earth, pretty much all the Z fighters couldn't even touch Frieza in, in general, all up until Goku and Vegeta appeared. And now Goku, of course, would fight Frieza first, as Goku in his base form using the god Essence would overpower final form Frieza. Now this was impressive, as Frieza would then showcase his golden form. Goku would then showcase Super Saiyan Blue. Or is it Super Saiyan Blue? Goku has now showcased a new form that you guys saw on the thumbnail. What form is this? I want you guys to take a good look at it and then comment down below. This form is paying homage to a person called Black Frieza. Now this is not saying that this is the same form, but Goku's god power is a little bit different because of the potential that Frieza gave him. Goku's a bit more mutated than even Vegeta is. So I want you guys to comment down below what you think the name for this form shall be. And I'll pick the best one. And make sure to like the comment as well so I can pick out the best one and I'll start using it for the next part. Goku would easily overpower Golden Frieza. Even though Golden Frieza was much more stronger, Frieza had no chance against this version of Goku. To the point to where Goku was starting to get bored of Frieza. So he actually lets Vegeta jump in to fight Frieza so Vegeta can get his revenge. Now Vegeta here does have Super Saiyan Blue, the same as before. But Vegeta here is far more powerful on top of the fact that he's also fighting Goku who's stronger than he is. So Vegeta on top of being stronger than the original is also going to get bigger boost and training than the original as well. 
This version of Vegeta is far stronger. I would even argue past around the Goku Black Saga arc when Vegeta trained in the Hyperbolic Time Chamber for a year. That's how powerful he is when he fought Goku Black, which is hundreds of times more powerful. So Vegeta here would, ease, would definitely have a bit more of an even fight against Frieza. But the fact that Frieza was injured in his fight with Goku and starting to get tired, Vegeta would easily handle Frieza like he did before in the original. And the difference here is would Frieza still destroy Earth? I would say yes. Because in this, Frieza would still surprise them and blow up the planet. Whis would then rewind time, as this is when Goku would fly in at full speed and completely obliterate Frieza with a Kamehameha wave, ending the Emperor once again. Now, as peace was finally restored, this is where some changes are going to occur, as the Universe 6 arc would happen. The only difference here is that some of the beings are more powerful than the original. Vegeta theoretically could solo pretty much the entire thing by himself. Now you could argue that hit would also give him a bit of a hard time, but even if Vegeta won or he lost, they have Goku. Goku is the one who can for sure take down hit with little to no issue. And because of this, we would then go into the Goku Black arc. Now in terms of the Goku Black arc, as we know, Goku Black would have caught Goku pretty much in the same thing. So the what if could go two ways. I could go into more detail with the fact that he took over our Goku from the what if, or he took over a Goku from a different timeline. So this is Goku that does not have Frieza's potential. Now, if I went the no potential way with Frieza, then Rose Goku Black would have been easily defeated. Now with the immortal Zamasu, they would still need Zeno to be able to destroy him. So that's how it would really have went. Now, if it's the other way around, because of this, when Goku goes to fight Goku Black, Goku would then transform into his full power state, that's what I'm gonna call it for now, into his god state until I see in the comments what the form's gonna be. Goku Black was impressed that this Saiyan has this much potential, but you guys gotta remember that Goku Black does not train like Goku does. He just gets stronger because of the, of the power that's already there, he's just unlocking it. So if it's either that Goku would just start to overpower Goku Black in their fight and defeat them. The same fight would end even if you have Vegito, of course, with the Supreme Kai, we would finally see Vegito for the first time. And that power is definitely enough to overpower Merge Zamasu and destroy them. But of course, with Infinite Zamasu, he would still be destroyed by Zeno. Either way, the same event would have happened. So the Goku Black arc would have just been a bit more prolonged than the other one. And you would have probably saw a cool form from Goku Black, maybe instead of the form that you guys are seeing from the thumbnail. It might be a bit of like the opposite color of blue. So it's, you know, to prove that he's a divine being. But that's up to you guys to decide. But now, we are now going to start going into the Tournament of Power. But I'm going to save that for the next what if. We now cut into the Tournament of Power. Now, a lot of the events in the beginning are going to be the same. Now, looking at Goku's team, as we know that Gohan is going to be the quote-unquote leader, Frieza would still be recruited by Goku as Goku knows that Frieza is very powerful. Now, since there is no Majin Buu and there is no androids, this means that we are going to have to use Goten and Trunks, as they are very powerful in their own right, and you could even argue that even Yamcha could come along just as an extra hand to help around here and there. But pretty much the team is relatively the exact same, but they are short on numbers, which make it more difficult for the tournament. A lot of the fighting would go the same. The only difference here is that Goten and Trunks, they don't know the fusion dance. But I do believe that, especially with Goten training with his father for all these years, since Goku never died truly and went to the other world, that means that Goten would have had more time to train with him. You know, Goku neglects his children. I feel like Goten and Trunks could potentially easily reach Super Saiyan at this point. And I wouldn't be too far-fetched to see that maybe Goten and Trunks can go Super Saiyan too. That wouldn't be too much of a far reach out there, considering the potential that Goten and Trunks have. So that is how powerful they're going to be. They have the power to become Super Saiyan 1 and Super Saiyan 2. Now as for Gohan, Gohan did slack off, but he would still have his fight with Piccolo beforehand and he would regain his strength, being stronger than the original. Now this means that he's stronger than the original Super Saiyan Blue Goku in the Tournament of Power, so Gohan is really powerful. Now skipping over a lot of the fights, this is when Goku would then meet Kale and Khalifla. Now they would have their little sparring back and forth, it's just that Goku would have never gone Super Saiyan Blue when he was attacked by Kale. Goku in base form would have handled her not much of an issue, but he would be surprised to see Jiren flying past him and knocking out Kale easily. Now because of this, they would back off on their own right. 
Goku would then go around, but then the main fight, as Belmont said, was Jiren. Now, Beerus was extremely confident the entire way through, because he knows how strong Goku has become, not to mention the fact that even when he first became a god, he was able to beat Beerus to a stalemate. Now, the only being that he might be a little bit worried about is Jiren, and the other gods of destruction, they do know of a mortal who is as strong as a god of destruction as well, that there might be two beings that have reached that realm of power, and it was Goku and Jiren. Now, the fight would begin, Goku in base form, would already be pushing Jiren. As Jiren would have to start blocking, they would go back and forth trading blows, but Jiren has not used his full power yet, as then Goku would then transform into a Super Saiyan, as Goku here would start fighting Jiren to a stalemate. As Jiren was shocked that this mortal and the Saiyan had so much strength, and he doesn't know how did he get so strong, and Goku states, well, I got stronger because of my friends. While it's completely different to Jiren's strength, as their battle would shake the entire void, the Grand Priest was shocked that this Saiyan had so much power swelling within him. It's absolutely astounding. And the fact that they haven't even touched the iceberg yet, as he knows that Son Goku here is not even trying yet. Now, Goku here, he's going to drag out the fight for as long as he can. Now, Jiren being pushed this far would break his limits and go into his limit breaking power. Now this, he would start to overpower Goku a little bit, but Goku here would quickly power that off as he would go into his full power state in his Super Saiyan form, make basically using the full power of his Super Saiyan state, and he would start to overpower Jiren again. Now Jiren is running out of options, Topo and Dispo would then run into his rescue, both using their new forms as Goku would overpower them quickly. Now you would argue too that Vegeta himself would be in Super Saiyan Blue. Now, this version of Vegeta is far more powerful than the original, and he would take care of Topo and Dispo and let Kakarot handle Jiren. But now, of course, Goku would then charge up a full power Kamehameha, and he would knock out Jiren, Dispo, and Topo quickly. Universe 11 was absolutely shocked that he knocked out three of their strongest fighters that quickly. It was terrifying. Now, Beerus, of course, was dancing around, making fun of them, saying how, wow, yeah, those are your guys' strongest fighters, not against my Goku, no way. My Saiyan's the strongest. Now, the Grand Priest was actually getting a little bit annoyed. As he says that this mortal has far too much power, it's dangerously high. As he would actually communicate with Whis via telepath, and he would ask him, saying, Whis, you have trained the Saiyan, right? What is the limits of his power have you seen? And Whis would actually laugh and say that the last time he fought him was actually a little while ago, and they fought in this gravity room, and Goku was actually able to overpower Whis. When he actually went to his full power, he was able to start overpowering Whis. Now this actually surprised the Grand Priest, as that's not supposed to happen. A mortal having that much power is way too dangerous. Now, of course, you can argue that Frieza, not getting overpowered by Dispo and everybody else, he would actually have a really good fight with Hit. As they would start training blows back and forth, Frieza being really powerful, as he would train harder in Hell, because he knows of how strong Goku was and how easily overpowered him, Frieza would start to overpower Hit. It would be a really cool fight, and Gohan would even go after Hit as well, teaming up with Frieza, and they would start to overpower Hit in their debut. Now, with Kale and Khalifa, they would still fuse into Kefla. Now, Goku wasn't necessarily exhausted, but he would fight the two Saiyans that have now done the fusion. Goku was actually kind of excited to fight a fusion, but he sees that they're far weaker than what Jiren and them was. So, he would fight them and drag the fight out a little bit to see their utmost limit, as then he would quickly use a Kamehameha wave and blast them off of the arena. Now, that's it, realistically. Most of the other fighters, other than the strongest ones, were defeated. So, Goku can easily just let... The rest of those universe 7 handle it as goku would just go around fighting people you know back and forth he was actually really bored as the tournament of power would then end with them knocking out the final opponent and that was it the tournament of power was over universe 7 easily won they had plenty more but now what now well since goku did technically win gohan's theoretically the leader of the tournament of power so he theoretically will get the wish but now before he could the Grand Prix stopped them. And he talked to Zeno. He said, my lord, 
there is one final challenge. They can use the Super Dragon Balls, but there's one final fight. Do you want to see it? Where I will actually fight the Saiyans and the rest of the Universe 7 for, for your fun. Now, Zeno, being childish, would say, yeah that, yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's do that. And oh my goodness, the problem is, is that the Grand Priest is not going to fight for fun. He's going to fight to try and kill him. And Whis was actually really concerned. The Angels were. But what, what can the Angels do? They can't team up against their father. So they bow down and stay out of the way. Now, Goku was confused as the Grand Priest would then float down towards them. As Goku would then wave at him, but he knows something's not right. As then, the Grand Priest would then give a powerful blow to Goku's stomach. As Goku's in base form, blasting him through the Tournament of Power Arena. As it would crack the entire arena, splitting it apart. The rest of Z Fighters were shocked. Now, all of them were fully healed by this point. As Vegeta would then transform into a Super Saiyan Blue and Gohan as well. They all, all of them would then team up to fight against the Grand Priest. But all of them had no chance against him. The Grand Priest was blocking all their punches with just a finger. And it was infuriating. As then, being pushed like this, the Grand Priest explains that he's going to destroy Universe 7. As this cannot happen. A mortal having that much power is not allowed. Vegeta would then power up even more. Pushing his limits further than he's ever gone before. As now, you guys might not have noticed, but Vegeta has been training with Beerus for the longest time now to use a power to catch up to Kakarot, which Beerus would not be too adamant to teach him. Now, because of this, Vegeta has learned to use Ultra Ego early, considering how much more powerful Vegeta has gotten, considering the motivation of how strong Kakarot is to him, he can easily learn Ultra Ego a lot quicker. Because of this, he would begin his fight with the Grand Priest, and he would start to lose again. Even though he had Ultra Ego, he far surpassed the God of Destruction at this point, it's still not enough to defeat the Grand Priest. Even though they're trying everything in their power, the Grand Priest is just toying with them. As the Grand Priest wants Zeno to at least have fun, because if he just kills them all instantly, then the Grand then Zeno will get mad and he'll just erase the Grand Priest. He doesn't want to do that. So he would just toy with them until, until Zeno gets bored. Then he'll say, all right, my lord, well, let's fight one last time. Then he'll kill them all and say, oh, they unfortunately passed away. But now Goku finally got up as we secretly healed him and told him saying that, look, you need to go defeat him. He's never seen his father act like this. Maybe he's just a frightened or afraid for the first time in his life that maybe you should maybe knock some sense into him. Goku would then go into his full power, powering up to his max potential. As Goku would have the purple aura around his body and the purple hair, he would then fly in and deliver a shocking blow to the Grand Priest's face, blasting the Grand Priest back. As then now, the, as Goku would then continue to attack the Grand Priest, the Grand Priest was blocking every single one of its attacks. With his Ultra Instinct, Goku cannot hit the Grand Priest, no matter what he did, though he was close to his power. As the Grand Priest would laugh and state, Oh, without Ultra Instinct, you can never keep up with me. But now Goku remembers what Whis was saying about the Ultra Instinct. He knows what it's about. He's been trying to learn it from Whis, but he hasn't been able to unlock it yet to push past that barrier. But now the Grand Priest would then charge up a massive key ball attack and he would throw it right towards the Z Fighters as this was going to kill them. Goku would then catch the attack and use all of his power, but then he would fall into the attack. But now because of this, Goku would finally shatter his limits and unlock Ultra Instinct with this power. Goku would then awaken. He looks very similar to his original full power state with the purple hair, but the aura looks more like a purplish Ultra Instinct power with, of course, the red silverish eyes. He would then fly in and continue his assault on the Grand Priest as the two would begin trading blows back and forth as it would shake the infinite void, shattering time itself. Goku here was finally able to catch up to the speed of the Grand Priest. But even though Goku was still running out of power, as he was exhausted from fighting the Grand Priest, he would then lose the form, and Grand Priest would grab him by the neck. And the Grand Priest was furious that he would even think about making him bleed. That's never going to happen again, as the Grand Priest does have some battle damage, and he even has a nosebleed from Goku. He would, he would then just about to end Goku and toss him to the ground, as Goku begs for everybody to give them their power. Give him all their power. As all the other universes have been brought back, they would all raise their hands and give Goku their energy. Even Jiren, charging up to his full power, would give Goku the power that he needs. Vegeta, Gohan, the hundreds of other fighters all know what to do. 
they would all give Goku their energy. Even the gods of destruction would give Goku their power. But the angels wouldn't do it, as they cannot disobey their father. The Grand Priest would be furious that the gods of destruction would go against him. But Beerus didn't care, as he knows that he was going to die anyway. Now Goku would stand there and be in his new Ultra Instinct form. His muscles were bulging as he was powering up to the max, taking all this energy in. He was almost like the sun. Now the Grand Priest was utterly shocked at what happened, as Son Goku would then charge in in a full power speed, shocking everybody as they couldn't even see it. And he would deliver a powerful blow to the Grand Priest's stomach, blowing him apart like he did Broly in Dragon Ball Z. And all the Z Fighters can see is a massive light. As Goku would then open his eyes, he was in a pure white void, as standing before him was both of the Zenos. Now they would tell Goku, saying that that was a great fight and they're really proud of what he did. But the power that Goku just did broke the infinite void. But Zeno states that since you gave us such a good time and you're a good friend, we'll repair everything and you can use the Super Dragon Balls to whatever wish that you want. So the Dragon Balls appeared in front of Goku, who looked down at them, and the dragon then appeared. And Zeno states to grant any wish you want. Goku would state that he wants everything to return to normal. And for Zeno to help out with the Grand Priest being a little bit grumpy, please. And then the dragon would then roar and fly into the air. Goku would then open his eyes, and he would be back on Earth. As everything was brought back to normal, all the universes were brought back. Peace was finally restored. Goku would then walk out seeing all his friends preparing for a party with tons of food after winning the tournament. As Lord Beerus and even Whis was there enjoying food, Goku was happy to be with his family and friends. Now as for the Grand Priest, he would have a big word with Zeno, as the Grand Priest was furious that a mortal defeated him. As Zeno scolded him and told him if he ever did something like that again, behind his back, he will destroy him. As in the Grand Priest would then walk away, having an angry, evil smirk. And that is it for this What If series, you guys. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know what you guys think of it down below about Grand Priest kind of turning a little bit rogue here. I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers, and I'll talk to you all later.